Welcome back to another episode of Two in the Cooler, folks. Here we go again. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you guys uh, for listening, subscribing, watching, all of that stuff. Speaking of Thanksgiving and holidays with certain things coming up, looking for the perfect gift? That's very easy. Just head over to SnackSpot. SE slash creator slash teespring.com. Get yourself something nice, something comfortable. We've got merch not just for this show, but also for Scheming and Dreaming, the other podcast that Snack Spot produces right here in this studio. I mean, we're talking hoodies, we got the long sleeves, we got these bucket hats, uh, mugs perfect for coffee, cocoa, whatever you're looking for, you can find it. Snack Spot, S E slash creator slash teespring.com. That's the word snack, the word spot, the letter S, the letter E, slash creator, slash teespring.com. You can hit the link in the uh, show description or check us out on Instagram. There's a link in the bio there as well. The big news, though, is that tomorrow, Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, we are doing another WWE live stream. We're having a watch party for SmackDown on Twitch that's going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitch tomorrow. The handle is SnackSpot underscore S-E. The word snack, the word spot, underscore, letter S, letter E on Twitch. The link for that is also going to be in this description and in our Instagram bio. So you got no excuse, folks, okay? You want to watch some wrestling? Come join us. Okay, It's a ton of fun. We have a belt now in the building that we give to whoever makes the best joke during the stream. Last month, Ben from Scheming and Dreaming won with his joke, President Hot Dog Emoji. Can't believe that won. I'm coming for the belt this time. I need that belt. So be sure to tune in tomorrow, Friday, day after Thanksgiving at 8 p.m. Eastern for a WWE SmackDown watch party live on Twitch at the handle SnackSpot underscore SE. We'll see you there. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by 13 Monkeys All-American Whiskey. 13 Monkeys is locally owned, it is veteran owned, and it is completely American made right here in the city of Buffalo. Right now it's available at over 30 retail stores in the western New York area, including Buffalo and Rochester. You can find it at the liquor stores you know and love, like Outlet Liquors. And if you're out on the town, you can order 13 Monkeys Whiskey for yourself at restaurants and bars, including Vice and Neat. I was actually at Vice last weekend, and uh, that's a that's a nice place, so this is top shelf stuff that's all i'm saying um i like it because i like to drink whiskey as far as liquor goes that's really my go-to and this is nice because it's a a good whiskey if you're just getting started it's a good whiskey if you know what you're talking about um i would definitely give it a try they gave us a sample here it's a it's a mash that they put together it's excellent And the good news is, if you want to try it for yourself, 13 Monkeys is going to be at the Loaded Lumber Holiday Spectacular Market from November 26th through December 23rd. Admission is absolutely free. Uh, The the market runs Tuesday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. So go there yourself, take a look around, make sure you try 13 Monkeys Whiskey, and if you can't get down there, but you still want to know where you can order 13 Monkeys Whiskey. For a full list, go to www.13monkeys.com. Try it for yourself, folks. 13 Monkeys, drink to honor, drink responsibly. This episode is out on Thanksgiving, and if you're listening to it day of, and you're looking around the kitchen, oh, I forgot uh, mashed potatoes, I forgot uh, corn flakes, whatever you have at Thanksgiving, relax. You don't need to rush out for the store. You can keep cooking at home. All you need to do is use Instacart. Instacart will get groceries and some of your other favorite products from some of your favorite local stores delivered right to your front door in as little as one hour. Whatever you need, the Instacart drivers are going to get it to you. So don't worry about Thanksgiving. Just keep things going, all right? You got a lot of things to worry about during the holidays. Going to the grocery store should not be one of them. So start using Instacart. And the best part is, right now, two in the cooler listeners get free delivery on their first order of $10 or more. Just hit the link in the show description and get yourself that deal. Start using Instacart all holiday season. Make life a little bit easier on yourself. You didn't even rap for me. You didn't rap for me. You didn't ask. Yeah, I guess that's true. I just assumed. Where's the mints? 
They're out in the this motherfucker mint guy. They're okay. out the. They're out there. All right, out in the uh, front. Today is a day that we give thanks to all that we are thankful for. So thank you for those things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Nicely done. Yep. Thanks. They're uh. Oh man, I'm walking here. <laughs> is this what this episode is gonna be? But it's gonna be me kind of starting to try and say something, and then you just ripping off some kind of <laughs> movie quote or song lyric. Is that the formula of the show normally? Now that I'm saying that out loud, perhaps that's what this has always been. That song I just came up with. <laughs> it's bad. No, it's, really it's got no words. It's be really Where good. The- well, that was just the start. That was the intro. That was the musical interlude. Yeah. Please continue with the show. Nah, I'm good. I don't want to give everything I've got uh-huh. you know, in the vault up for free. I uh, got to make money somehow. Man, a couple ideas that I want to do. One, I've been talking about doing that spoken word album for a long time. Yeah, when are you going to do that? I don't know, but I uh, hopefully soon. What's next? What do you mean, what's you next? You said you got a couple ideas that you want to do. Oh, the other thing I want to do? You know that song? It's like a third eye blind song. No. I don't even it's know what like, third eye um, blind is. What are they The band? What are they saying? Well, I think they sing Danger this song. Zone? I think they sing the Danger Zone is one of their top <laughs> What hits. are they saying though actually? I think they sing that song's I'll never let you go. I'll never let you down, you know? No. You don't know that song? <laughs> Not never the way that you turn around. Uh, 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 no. Want it. You don't know that song? I don't want it. Well, Now we're going to no, give you up. <laughs> let you down. Gonna run was this an in-person <laughs> rickroll? <laughs> this is uh, you. Yeah, it was. Rare. Yeah, they don't happen often. Every once in a while, I still see like a good rickroll, and I feel like people don't even know what rickrolls are anymore. Sure they do. No, Rick they roll, don't. I mean, that's just a part of the culture. <laughs> but it is tough to... It's a way more difficult to rickroll somebody than it used to be. If I was a funny person, right, I would have um, written an entire essay in college and like and kind of made the whole thing seem like it was leading up to one thing and then I would just insert the lyrics too. That'd be difficult to do depending on the length of the paper. What do you even have? I I was just look I was just why do you care if I look at something? It just feels I don't know. I just want I just want you to be here with me. I'm engaged. Okay, I know. I mean, I, I can understand that. It's just sometimes it doesn't feel like it when you're looking at the phone. It's either, I mean, I was, my eyes were closed for the start of the show. <laughs> yeah. But it was because I was just really listening to the sound of your voice. Oh, man. What? I'm just thinking about something I don't know if we can talk about on the show. Probably not, then. No, but I, I wanted to kind of mention it to you to see if you also noticed this thing. But um, anyways... You want to talk about Ninja Turtles? Yeah, I almost want to just pause the episode and know what you're going to say, but we'll leave that for later. I mean, don't forget. No, I won't. If okay. you if you remind me, I, I, might I will not. not. Emily, I will not forget. Write down in the calendar for after the show. <laughs> yeah. Um. Do you want to talk about Ninja Turtles? Yeah, we can talk about. Okay, Ninja Okay, because I really All want right, to talk here. about. What do you got? Turtles. What do you got for me? Nope. I'm just like. How important were Ninja Turtles to you growing up? Because we watched it together, but it was Can like, I tell you something right now before yeah. we even continue? Definitely not as important as they were to you. Well, sh- sure. Um, I liked those like Ninja Turtles we had, the big ones. Like those do they, they probably like those are probably rare. They're not as rare as you would think, but they are a coveted item. Like people do really well, like them. Well that's what I mean. Okay, so I guess that But they're available. They're, a lot of them were probably made so people probably have them, but I feel like I like there's something that there's a group of people out there that should be passionate about them yeah and there is um because those things are fucking cool those are cool toys you yeah know? yeah they don't make toys like they used to no they make them way better than they used to um but yeah if you like ipads no they make like the well that's the thing is because toy companies have to compete with the screen screen with the yeah. magic boxes with the, uh, uh, um they have to make these these crazy their toys like be really cool um and like screen accurate and all that stuff like 
I feel like when we were kids, you nothing could still, was screen accurate. Nothing was screen accurate. You could still get away with like um, putting just like a sticker of something on a product completely unrelated, and be like, "This is a toy for that thing." Like when st- this is way before us, obviously, but I th- it, the trend still ran into when we were around a little bit. I think was like when the Star Trek TV show first aired in the '60s, they would just put like a sticker that said Spock on like a construction helmet with like a light on top of it. And they're like, that's Star Trek. There you go. And then you'd run around wearing this thing that had absolutely nothing to do with the show. It depends on how you look at it. If it had nothing to do with it. How do you know that somewhere around Spock's house, he didn't have a construction helmet with a white lane. On they it. never showed it but, on the show, but, but he could. Yeah, I guess so, but the chances are very slim. Um, I do know, ears. though, that you have expressed a little bit of resentment in the past towards the fact that a lot of toys are now like more movie accurate, movie quality. Yeah. Like Buzz Lightyear is the one that I know you always bitch about. Oh, my God. Big time. The thing about... Oh my gosh. I, I feel like there are better, better examples that I can't think of, but Buzz Lightyear, because they sell it now in... A box that is very similar to the box from the movie that looks like a spaceship. Yeah. Um, and God, if I had seen that when I was a kid, and also like, it really bothered me that Mister Potato Head didn't look like the Mister Potato Head in Toy Story. Like you couldn't get the right, you face couldn't get the features. right. Yes, exactly. And now they sell that as a pack with the accurate Mrs. Potato Head, and I feel. Dumb for still like seeing those caring. things and like caring, yeah. But I I can't help it. When I was when I was in Florida at Disney Springs and they have this whole wall of Pixar toys and it's all, you know these, uh, all these Toy Story toys and I'm like fuck man these damn kids like they have uh Zerg toys where you can like look in the back which was a thing from Toy Story two and. They could it could like shoot the balls, which it also did in Toy Story two, and you could not find a Zerg toy when I was. We a kid. had a Zerg toy. It was like that big though. It was Zerg. Yeah, but I'm t- but these are like this is Beggars like a real Zerg toy. Yeah, but now I can be. Well, there's no such thing as a real Zerg toy because Zerg isn't a real, real. Okay, like, but we just they, saying, they, they, no, we were just saying this about something else. So we were talking about Winnie the Pooh, and oh, you were yeah. going through. Oh yeah, you were going through all yeah. of what. All right, yeah, we we will we'll save that. Well, I can I just tell this part? Oh, sure. I mean, we were talking about it. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with later, really. We were, you were kind of you were looking up like what um, mental mental disorders, disorders each, each of the Winnie the Pooh characters represented. Yeah, and the last one said Christopher, Christopher Robin, Robin schizophrenia. had schizophrenia. So. If that's the case, then none of the other characters have any symptoms because he's completely making them up. But I guess was always true. But you know what I mean. We know what we're talking about. But since they're in the show, they would technically be real, real characters. So by that, what you're saying, that's what I'm saying is Zerg's not real. Zerg's not real, man. (laughs) (laughs) Hashtag Zerg's not real. Uh, Available right now, teespring.com. Man, Toy Story 2, starring Wayne Knight as Al from Al's Toy Barn. <laughs> I have to drive all the way to work on a Saturday. All the way to work. I think about that so much, that particular line. There's a Twitter account. That's the reason I think about it all the time. There's a Twitter account, and that's all that says. And all it does is every Saturday, it tweets that two-second clip. It's, really? It's only tweets. It's a, it's a fun place, the internet. It's strange. Al's Toy Barn. Al's Toy Barn. Not That's fun. The, not fun for toys. No, not fun for toys. Well, unless you're a Barbie. Yeah, they seem. But even to be some of the Barbies like were a little bit evil, weren't they? No, uh, I thought one of the. No, I thought they did come after the Barbie that was getting out of there, though. Did they not? I don't think so. I think maybe yes. in three, the Barbie in that movie got some judgment, but. Oh. Like from Ken, because that was like a whole thing. But yeah, I like Toy Story three. I like Toy Story four. I didn't watch either of those movies until fairly recently, like within the past year. Yeah, yeah. Toy Story three was really 
a difficult watch for me and for a lot of people. Was toy which one's Okay, wait. So 3 is the one where they're in the the toys get b- dumped at the um daycare? Yeah. With the big bear? Yeah. Lotso. And then 4 is when they go on when they go on the road. Yeah. And the little girl has all the toys. Yeah. And Spoonie. Forky. Forky. Oh, that's Sporky. right. Forky. I know his name is Forky, but he is but a he spork. But he is a spork. Should be Sporky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's politically incorrect to call Sporky Forky. Hashtag cancel Pixar. Yep. But you were pretty into Forky. Like, I feel like you referenced Forky all the time when that movie came out. I didn't watch it until like a year ago. Oh. So just well, no I must way. have just been imagining that, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's all right. Forky. Sporky. Yeah, so I mean, sorry. Well, I know what I was talking about today. Mm. The love guru. Of course you were. Let's talk about Mike Myers because... Because Halloween just passed, so now what's he going to do for the next 365? Uh, yeah. Yep, exactly. One of my favorite jokes I ever said was on this podcast. It wasn't really... Um, was one time you called Mike Myers, you referred to him as Michael Myers, and you were like, if Michael Myers were here right now, and I cut you off and I go... He would stab you right in the face. And that, that made me laugh. You're dumb. That was a good clip. You're dumb. That was a good clip. Stand by that Mark was here. That was great. That, that was, was on the show. Episode. Yeah, it was on the show. It's all blur. You talk about the love guru every every once in a, once in a while. Because it's a great movie. I w- am kind of interested to rewatch it. Oh, please Because do. I've only seen it once, but... It's so goddamn funny! I can't believe we're, I can't believe how much of this podcast has there's been so, dedicated to the love guru. There's so many funny scenes in that movie. When oh my god, it's never ending funny scenes. <laughs> I just w- rewatched all of the Austin Powers movies. Okay, not bad. Yeah, I watched. Um, well, they were mostly most of them were at least two of them were on Netflix. Netflix for a little while. I don't know if they still are. And I think when they first got put on, I watched them kind of in parts. Like I'd put it on when I was ready to go to sleep and watch a little bit of it. And then I worked my way through. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good movies. Okay movies. Yeah. Like nothing nothing around. They were about. huge though. Like that was a really big yeah. cultural thing was Austin because Powers. Because he, you know. He's Austin Powers. Yeah, Matthew just did a little strange <laughs> shoulder movement for anybody listening. Well, that's like that's my Austin Powers. Ooh. That's not bad. Yeah. You got to get a little more into it, though. You know. You but I think that's it. the thing is he is really into it, but he's still like not good at it, doing it. Like he doesn't look smooth doing it. No, that's I guess which that's is why joke. it's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. he's so smooth. Because it, really it, like not, it works for him in yeah, the movie. He's so smooth to everybody else in the movies, but he's really not smooth. That's such a great idea, though, is like taking a James Bond uh, kind of story structure and then inserting just like a, v- a kind of a real, like very pop uh, British guy from the 60s. It's a great idea for a movie. Well, which I guess is why they made three of them yeah. and it worked so well. Well, one, isn't that what. Uh, um, well, this no, that's not necessarily. But I was thinking of the Master of Disguise. It's kind of like it's different. It's like a spin on that kind of. Yeah. And the other one that I was thinking of was, um, I think the guy that plays Mr. Deeds is in it. His name Adam is not, Sandler. No, not Mr. Deeds. Um, what's the guy? Uh, uh, uh. It's called like James English, or it's called something. Oh, Johnny English. Johnny English. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. That's who, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> Mr. Bean. Man, I never watched. I, I really like um, those Mr. Bean movies. I thought Johnny English was really like. I remember when those when the first one came out, and like it was There's like PG thirteen. There's two. You know, Johnny English Reborn. I know for a fact we've watched them both. Together. I don't think I've ever watched either. No, you. Dude, you whoa! This is a fucking talk about CTE, man. What the fuck? What are you gonna do? Somebody's gotta have it. You, there was like a, a maybe a couple week period or something where. How old are we? I mean, it's tough to say. We weren't that young. I think maybe it was like your senior year of high school. No way. It could have been. 
and I came back into town and you were like, Johnny English is on Netflix. And I'm like, oh, I've always wanted to see that. And you're like, let's watch both of them right now. And you fell asleep, obviously. <laughs> so I didn't watch either no, of them. No, but, but the point is you had seen them before and like had been watching them <laughs> no, pretty I consistently. I don't think so. I think that's correct. No. I don't know that I've seen either of those movies. I would I would go out on a limb and say that I know for certain that I haven't. Are there any movies that you will like rewatch a bunch of times? Oh yeah, a ton. Like what? I was having this conversation today with somebody else already. Yeah. Um I mean all of my favorites, Jaws, Jurassic Park, right. Law Abiding Citizen, all the National Treasures, all the Pirates of the Caribbean, um, the Da Vinci Code mm-hmm. and those I've actually only ever seen Inferno one time, I think. But Angel and Demons seen a bunch of times. Um Good Will Hunting, watched it again the other day. <sighs> Um, Dead Poet Society, I've seen a handful of times. Like, yeah. I'm really in the mood. Yeah. Um, God damn. The Dark Knight movies. Yeah. Um, Black Panther, I've I've I like to rewatch every once in a while. That movie's really good. Yeah. Are they doing a new Black Panther? Yeah. With who? Don't know. Like I think I think it's gonna focus on uh, Suri, his sister. Is that the the yeah? But isn't she? Because she's in. She's like an Avenger in Endgame, right? Not, but she fights with the Avengers in Endgame, doesn't she? She, her, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. I know she was like doing some science shit in yeah. that movie, but uh, I don't know. She definitely does some science shit. Yeah, but I don't think she's ever been like a, officially made a, a part of the the team. Yeah, so she's the leader of Wakanda now. Oh, I don't know. They should have brought Childish Gambino back. Well, he's. Uh, he does play somebody already. Remember, no, he was but in was the it for Spider Man? Wait, who was in? Uh, nah, not Charles Cambino. Who was the guy? No, I think it was Donald Glover. That he fights. No, it was Michael, Michael B. B. Jordan. Jordan, who's dead. Yeah, I know, but he's, but no, he's not dead though, because isn't he? Uh, the electric guy in Spider Man, the old. That's Jamie Fox. Oh. Racist! <laughs> Cut that! Boom! <laughs> Cut that! No, I swear! No, 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 no! Yeah, no, no. no, I'm not backpedaling. That's an honest <laughs> mistake. <laughs> yeah, an honestly <laughs> racist mistake. That is not. That is not racist oh at all. Oh my god, this is. I can't. He's an actor. Oh my god, the tweets are already flooding yeah. in. This is unbelievable. Yeah, you can suck me. What the? I swear he was supposed to play another role. I know he was in the first Spider-Man. He was supposed to be another Marvel role, yes. wasn't he? So you're thinking of when everybody wanted him to be Spider-Man before the Andrew Garfield stuff came out. Oh. Because okay. that's what he talks about in his special. He has a special? Oh, the that's, Donald Glover special? Yeah, Don- he talks yeah. about Spider-Man in that? Yes, dummy. I've listened what to that so fuck? many times. If, okay, you'll remember when I, when I, like... So, remember, he's talking about, like... um. How they were cast in a new Spider-Man, and somebody tweeted like, "Donald Glover can play Spider-Man. He's nerdy." Oh yeah, yes. I remember he's nerdy. I don't remember anything else about that. Uh, so then, but you just, d- you doing it? I wouldn't have remembered if you didn't do it in the Donald. That's Glover what. Voice. That's why yeah. I did it. I do appreciate that, man. Remember, like, right after we saw that going to Home Depot with our dad and just, like, laughing about that Shit Home Depot the, yeah. Shitting in the... Yeah. He doesn't have to do that. <laughs> God damn. I wonder if he'll ever do stand-up again. Because he was so funny. His... I don't know if... I feel like I've said this before. His Comedy Central half hour is one of the funniest of know, all time. It. It's... He... Oh, yeah. It's... It is... It's unbelievable. It's so good. He's a talented guy. He's, I mean, name somebody with more talent. Can't think of anybody. Um, Dolly Parton. That's true. Her special was really good. She did stand-up comedy? Dolly Parton, yeah, for a little bit. And like the... When, uh, Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett was a good comedian, but he was a terrible rapper. He had no musical skill. That's, um, that's a known fact. Um, the fox that's the king in um, that movie, Robin Hood. Oh, my God, dude. You're saying things that are, like, so <laughs> off base. Like... <laughs> <laughs> And, and I feel 
like an asshole because I have to correct you, which is true. I am an asshole b- for having to correct Wait, you. Wait, is the king an alligator and Robin Hood's a fox? No, dummy. Robin Hood is the fox, but the king is a, uh, he's a lion. King John. I'm sure he's not a fox. Who are you talking to right now? Maybe I'm thinking of um, um, Briar Fox. I mean, that's why I associate bad things with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you love Briar Fox. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, my God. More <laughs> tweets are coming in. They're piling up. That's, that's, see, I don't mind my your corrections, but now you're just being a little mean to me. Don't blame Going me. The, the, the tweets. <laughs> There's nothing I can Nobody's do Nobody's tweeting. This show's not live. Everybody's. The show but, is not live. And that's what's so crazy is the tweets are already <laughs> rolling in. Hashtag cancel Matt is already trending in North America. It's just below hashtag pizza tipping. Sorry. That's still number one. <laughs> I'm so ready for this to be done. This is, man, I've, uh, I'm just, I love talking to you, dude. I'm very excited, but I do want to hey. talk about. I wanted to bring something up. Please. So I went to visit Andy in Rochester a couple weeks ago. And what? he has his room in his house, no, and he didn't. keeps the door locked. And oh, I walk. <laughs> oh, sorry. I walked in, just Nazi flags everywhere. Not that funny. No, <laughs> you are a Nazi is what I'm trying to put out to the public. See, you're a Nazi. I mean, uh, so stop kicking me I under did- the table. <laughs> Fucking idiot! You long-legged <laughs> buffoon! I didn't know you there was gangly div- mook! <laughs> I didn't know there was a divider. <laughs> oh my god! Stop! I'm Get- looking. I was looking to see where the divider was. For future reference. Okay, take it easy. I'm. F- I'm fine. I'm not a Nazi. You're a Nazi. Let, we could go back and forth all day about who's a Nazi and who's not. But the point is, <laughs> insert whatever you want right there, something terrible. The Los Angeles Philharmonic. <laughs> gotcha. Nailed it, but it's funnier if it's more if it's like a Cincinnati city. Somewhere where like the Philharmonic probably is not that, like a smaller Buffalo. city. The, the Buffalo the Philharmonic, Philharmonic comes to Buffalo That's every perfect. year. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have a buff. <laughs> <laughs> there's not one philharmonic that like yeah, travels around there's, no man it's not it's not so fucking you're Willie telling Nelson. me you're telling me that the philharmonic these people are part of the philharmonic to play one show a year no they play multiple shows Where? but the christmas show is the big one i've never heard about anything other than the christmas show well, you got to put your ear to the streets my man. ear That's is to the one. streets i don't know what i don't know what else they, they travel do, around they don't come to buffalo for no reason well, they don't have to come to Buffalo. They're already they're, here they're because they're the Buffalo nah. Philharmonic. I I don't know. My, I'm just not, you know, I'm very tired. Yeah, I could, yeah, I could tell. But I'm not going to. So I've said a lot of crazy things that mm-hmm. are incorrect. But I will say that. Even though I am tired, I don't know that me being tired is to blame for the reason that I'm saying the things that I'm saying because most of them I've thought were accurate. I've said them mostly with confidence. Yes. The yes. Philharmonic one, it was I was on the fence about. I kind of mm-hmm. knew that, but there was a part of me that, that you know thought that the Philharmonic traveled. So there's multiple Philharmonics. Well, I thought it was cool to be a part of the Philharmonic. Now it's not that cool. Well, I mean, no. it still is in a way, you know. I hate Ohio. Speaking of that, like sure. you said, Cincinnati yeah, I know. sucks. I know. You've hated Ohio for the longest mm-hmm. time. You were a huge Ohio State fan when you were, like, very little. Yeah, I did this weird thing with, like, college sports where I, like, I was very passionate about Ohio State for, like, f- through middle school or, yeah. like, even a little before that, like, for, like, five years. And then, um, and then I always thought Penn State was cool because they were more like they were kind of up and comers, not up and comers, but they're like they got exponentially better like as a Big Ten school with all their sports. I feel like that could be also completely inaccurate. There's no statistic, st- there's no statistics I'm basing that off of. It's strictly like the way that I viewed them. I was never like a Penn State fan, but I was like, oh, they're cool. But obviously, you can't be f- fans of both. And now I don't really. 
have a school. I like to watch college football. I don't really have a school that I root for. I do root against Michigan because University of? Yes. Not Michigan State. I don't like Michigan. They both suck. I actually probably like University of Michigan a little bit better than Michigan State for no reason, but I really don't like Michigan State. No, University of Michigan. Gotcha. Also for no reason. Well, that's, I mean, that's all right. You got to do something. You got to do something. Michigan to stay State's occupied. like one of those schools where everybody you talk to is like, oh, I'm a big Michigan State fan, or like, oh, I'm a big Notre Dame fan. I'm like, mm. how the fuck is everybody a Notre Dame fan? A lot of people are Notre Dame fans. Everybody. Sometimes I, you know what? I think it's like, like a lot of people from Western New York are yeah. like, yeah, I love Notre Dame football. Like, sure. Why? Give me an, give me one reason. Well, I'll tell you what I think it is, is that it's kind of like why you liked Ohio State, I'm assuming, when you were young, is you just hear something and then you attach yourself I to still it. Do that. Yeah, of course. But they that happened to them with Notre Dame when they were young. Everybody in the world. Yeah. They saw I, Rudy and they're just like, let's go. Potentially, yeah. But also that little the the Fighting Irish like logo is everywhere. It's on all kinds of stuff. Cancel the Fighting Irish logo. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a good logo, though. Like, I, I don't know. Great logo. I don't yeah. think we should cancel it, but there's people that do. We never talked about this. Your favorite baseball team, switch names. Yeah. When I was a kid, and I, I got really into baseball for a little while. Well, our grandpa was a huge He was a huge baseball Cleveland fan. fan. Yeah. What are they called now? The Guardians. That's a cool name. There was, like, this thing. I saw Brad this on the internet so i don't know how true it is but that there was like a roller derby team called the cleveland guardians and so when they found out that was what the name was going to switch they started selling like a ton of cleveland guardians merchandise because they were like this is our name like it's not blah blah blah. uh-huh i'm sure they lost that fight but yeah i mean uh, maybe they hopefully they got some kind of payout or whatever but they could have i mean maybe they just got well i think it's one of those things where because i do think that like when you have like with websites for example Mm. like i think that if you have a website name for no reason kind of thing not for no reason but and there's somebody that like a huge thing right like that needs that website name or whatever you can um and they're, they're, you're like, no, you have to buy it for me yeah. for some ridiculous amount of money. I think you can like legally win a battle and get that name without having to pay him anything. Like, whoa, like because what happens in the in that show, the Le- the league, Taco has the Dallas Cowboys website yes. name, and then he does get a bunch of money from yeah, them. But the you're saying so that in real life, I don't know if this is true, uh-huh. but I feel like I I've had this conversation with somebody, and there's like a a thing where like. Like, this would be crazy, but I don't know if it would work for all things. Like, I don't know that, like, it would work if you, they're not renewing something. But say, like, I'm. You, it would have to be something huge that doesn't have a website. Like, say, yeah. and it's hard to think of something like that right, right. now. Right. Well, I think the easiest way to do it would be, like, maybe you have some site name and then... Uh, a company starts that has that name, and so you, you're already pre-existing. But you know what and, I'm saying. But then they're huge. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they're you know a billion dollar company or whatever, and have a you know whatever uh, this huge following. And you're like, hey, I need this, and they're like, pay me X amount of money. And you're mm-hmm. like, I'm not. That's ridiculous. Like you're you have this domain for no reason. I think there's like a legal process that you can go through to obtain that name like prove that you need like are supposed to have that name not them i don't know if that's true there's no way that uh, look it up. yeah take it take a look because i mean that that makes zero sense because you you own that you you know you own that domain name um it re- i don't know if it's really that different from like people having uh instagram or twitter handles right like um you know if i had like uh, Adam Sandler as my handle, and then Adam Sandler was like, "That's my name, and I'm famous. I want that. You got to buy it." That happens all the time. That's why a lot of people put the real whatever in oh, that thing. Oh, so 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 yeah, like um, there's a there's a thing called the ACPA, the ant the anti cyber squatting consumer protection act. So like, say you for whatever reason figured out that Google or Facebook 
had to renew their name and they forgot and you took Facebook's name, we're like, I'll give it back to you for billion like for a billion mm-hmm. dollars. Um, this act, it says, it authorizes a trademark owner to sue an alleged cyber squatter in federal court and obtain a court order transferring the domain name back to the trademark owner. Okay, yeah, th- so that makes a lot of sense because the, the name has already been trademarked. Uh, and I believe that that would actually work in the instance that we referenced from yeah, the League like with Taco. The, the Dallas Cowboys. That's not really what I was talking about. So you're saying if you... I have a website called Facebook sure. in 2002, and it exists, but then Facebook becomes Facebook. Well, see, because they would they have to be well, on let's, the internet uh, to do that. I mean, let, I mean, why would we even use the that time period? Let's just say right like today I bought Facebook.com, and then five years from now, Facebook wants to start. But I guess they'd choose a different name exactly. in that instance, wouldn't they? Yeah. So I guess that uh, – perhaps wouldn't work but i but then i wonder but i bet if, you there's people but, that have like low key web, but i'm saying it's a i'm talking about a website that like is nothing right like nobody ever goes yeah. on maybe it's and not then even somebody set up. yeah but they they have the domain name but just because you have a domain name doesn't mean that it's copyrighted right it depends but so it's certainly not trademarked oh that's so why that's I mean, trademarked yeah. trademarked so then if if you if you're this big company that all of a sudden wants to start a website and this you know person who has had three people on their website in the past fifteen years mm-hmm. is like no I'm not giving you this domain name unless you give me a million dollars I don't think I think there's a way for that company to obtain that name yeah I think it's more similar to like what this is like what this is talking about because chances sure. are a company that big their name would be trademarked yep so. That the name of that website technically shouldn't belong to that person, even though they started it before the name was trademarked. Yeah. If that's not, and you right. couldn't trademark it twice, you know right. what I mean? Like you couldn't trademark that name if they had already trademarked it. Yeah, I man, that's so that is so strange. If that there must be some way to work around that, I imagine, but uh, that we're not thinking of. But if you take that just kind of at face value, that's really interesting. It's almost as if. Um, let me try and think of a good analogy. Well, I have one. Okay. Okay. So you know how we talk about like Instagram pages dying all the time. Uh huh. So like, say, you know, after our, we started a tool in the cooler website and after our third episode, we were like, you know what? We don't want to do this anymore. And then it lays dormant for five years. And then, I mean, obviously our stuff is owned by us, but theoretically if it wasn't, and then five years down the line, Somebody starts a company called Two in the Cooler, and they're a huge company. They're doing super well, and they want to start. And they go to start a website, and they see that we have the name. I don't think we could say we're not giving this to you unless you pay us a, a million dollars. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a way that they can legally obtain that name. Right. That's kind of the same thing we were saying before. But I wanted to think of something like if you really get to the base of it, it's almost like it's almost like kind of if you lived in a very small area and you had a chicken and you got eggs from that chicken and then down the road a guy started a business where he like sold chickens and he was like your chicken that you have is my chicken because i have a company that's all chickens i don't think that's the same I guess not because that's more about property ownership, but maybe, but but I, I mean, intellectual you know I mean? property but can is you the kind same of, kind of ownership. Yeah, but no, can you but follow I, me? No, where but I'm I, trying to think? I, I think no, I, I don't. Well, I, I'm not doing. I know job what you're. I, I understand what you're saying, but there's way more factors that would go into that. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah, you know, we should get I'm Sam, talking Sam about Burkhardt like on the a, phone. A, a website that's laying dormant. Like mm-hmm. it's, you know what I mean. Um, and then all. But of I don't know why that should have. Uh, any f- why that should be a factor at all what that it's laying dormant yeah although i guess you do have a point if the person that owns the pre-existing website is making a lot of money off of that site and that's kind of their livelihood well also now they're getting clicks and stuff like that because the right people are trying to find the actual yeah yeah, yeah it'd be like if you you know what i mean it would be like if right now you could start a website called facebook.com you would make a lot of money because people would go to it. and Right. Um, I got an idea. Mm-hmm. This is off the top, off the rip. Five round. No. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I want to get. I want it to get toughed. Okay. Thanksgiving draft. Okay. Foods. Foods. Okay. So this is like a snake draft sort of thing. Well, you go. Yeah, yeah. We'll snake it. Okay. We'll snake it. Make sure we do five rounds. Okay. Also, I'm not positive I n- am S- going to be able to figure out the how a s- snake draft works so when it's not go, on fantasy if football. If you're going one, right? You then go. Twice. I go twice. Okay. And then right. 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 You go twice, and then I go. Twice. Right. So like gym snake class draft football. doesn't really work with two people. No, but it is still often used, isn't it? Because that's what we always did for football in gym class and stuff. Yeah, like but not for two people. Yeah. Well, there are two teams. No, that's um. No, that's only first pick, second gets two picks. That's different. First pick, second two. Isn't that the yeah. way it goes? Yeah, but that doesn't go on for every round following a snake draft. Right, is- right, right. Yeah. But we can start that way still, and then we'll just do it okay. back and forth. Okay, fair, okay cool. Fair. Um, but that – okay, that might fuck us up. We'll figure it out. Yeah, it might. <laughs> go. Uh, number one, mashed potatoes, obviously. Yeah, that's a great pick. I'd go number two, stuffing. Number three, no. Well, so my round one pick two is gravy. My round two pick one is stuffing. That is gravy as a condiment. I can't pick gravy. I mean, Emily, it's not a food. Gravy is not a food. Can Can I pick gravy? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's not a food. People. It's a key element no, of it Thanksgiving. Goes, no, I think, but it's I think a condiment. it's pickable because it goes on your plate. Do you drink gravy on its own? I would, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think that gravy 100 percent counts. But it's not a food; it's a condiment. Yeah, but you, but I couldn't eat Thanksgiving dinner without gravy. It's okay, essential. fine. I'll I'll allow it under one B whatever gravy two A stuffing. Yes. Okay, uh, then I'm going to go – oh, God. I'm going to go oh, – I feel like these are all terrible picks. Yeah, I, I'm content right now. I know. You, you, have a, you, have a good, you have a good team. I'm going to – oh, my God. All I have is mashed potatoes on my plate, and I'm panicking. I get, oh, I'll go uh, with ham. Now, this is something we have to dive into a little bit because I agree with your pick. Mm-hmm. I mean, I agree with it being picked before turkey. Yeah. I love ham. Like dinner ham, like a yep. – oh, with a glaze? With a glaze. You have to have a glaze. <sighs> glaze. Can I pick glaze next? If no. you pick gravy, can I pick no, glaze? That's different. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, like, to me, turkey is goodish. Like, I like eating turkey. But honestly, turkey isn't what I look forward to for Thanksgiving. It's really the mashed potatoes, the stuff. It's absolutely. But I'll I'll make my selection. Okay. Um. Can I pick cheesy potatoes? Fuck you and the fuck fuck you. Because we oh, always have cheesy potatoes too. I can't too. believe that. Yeah, pick oh, cheesy you potatoes. Asshole. Shout out Courtney. Fucking most bomb cheesy potatoes in the game. Oh my god. Cheesy potatoes. Now what the fuck am I going to pick? I had another pick dialed up before that popped in my I brain. I bet so. you did, you bastard. You thanks. Is that my bastard. third pick? That Yeah, so now okay. we're so now I'm... You're making your fourth The selection. bottom of the third round. Oh. Oh, you only have two picks? Yes, I picked mashed potatoes and ham. Okay. So my third in the draft after that... You said cheesy potatoes. God, that's so good. Um... Trying to remember what else is even on the table. Oh, you're missing a big one. Uh, then I know you know. Oh no, what's it gonna? What is it? Um. Uh, what else do I eat? It's it's like one of your go tos. I feel like I just said both of no, my go tos. There's, there's one you're missing. Uh, corn. <laughs> okay, I thought it was corn. Corn's I a think good pick. I think I will go with. Corn, on its own, not the best. But corn is an w- excellent team player. Oh, you can eat it. You can ha- you can every time you take a bite, whether you're gonna combine more than one thing or just eat one thing, like you should put some corn in that bite. Right. Um, my next pick. Ooh, now see now it definitely gets tough. Yeah. 
This is my fourth pick. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna go. What else am I putting on my plate? I'm probably gonna go. Like. Some type of green beans. Like some type of like you know seasoned buttery like not healthy for you green beans. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, that in if that's what you're going with, then I'm gonna go with uh like you know yams or whatever. You're you're a mashed uh, yam guy. Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, I think it's pretty or good. Squash. Sometimes it's squash. Yeah. I think there's both. Yeah, there are both. I'm gonna go. Here's what I'll go with. This is not something that. We always have, but it is it's that yams with like the marshmallows on top. That's what I'm picking. Yeah. Okay. That's got marshmallows on it. So, so? fair. No, yeah, fair. Um, all right, so my to close out my draft. This is tough. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I put on my plate. I guess I'll take turkey, like at this point. Yeah, yeah. I know that turkey. Um and, and I shouldn't say I guess, like I do like turkey. So I'm gonna take turkey. I really only eat turkey on Thanksgiving because I feel like I I'm expected to like I should eat turkey. Yeah, like you can't take a plate without putting right. turkey on it. Yeah, because it's so attached. And also, which, I like turkey, but yeah, it's like it's, I guess so. But if we're really getting down to it, as we are, turkey is the uh, the only way I can think of to say this is like the redheaded stepchild of Thanksgiving, even though it's the most prominent the, yeah, fixture yeah. for that holiday. People are always worried about like, oh, am I going to be able to cook the turkey? That's what sucks because it does it. It takes the most time to do. It's grueling. most difficult. It's grueling yeah. to cook a whole turkey, no matter how you do it. And at the end of the day, I don't think a lot of people like really love it that much. I I I will say I like turkey. Like For I sure. like eating Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah, but I do agree that ham is like number one. Ham is my preferred. Like I'll usually have, I'll eat turkey a lot as a leftover. But usually because there's more of it, right? But like I'll usually take equal parts turkey to ham. Ooh. And again, I'll do something similar, but just for show. This has all been my way of stalling for time while I try and think of something yeah, to draft fifth. I fucking I have no idea. I guess I'm gonna pick um something that I uh, I. Wow! Nah, I'll count. I'll, I'll I'm take it. it. I'm gonna pick. Uh, I'm gonna pick. That's pie. a fuck. That's a great sleeper. Yeah. You had no chance of winning this draft until you just until took pie. pie. Yeah. yeah well, because stuffing, pick. stuffing is a heavy hitter. Stuffing and mashed potatoes and gravy. Those three. I want. <laughs> I've done this. I'm not proud to say it, but I will make like because to me, it's good enough. A lot of people will disagree with this, but. Have you ever had like powdered mashed potatoes? No. Or I, well, yes. When we were younger, that's we we would eat that all the time. I like powdered mashed potatoes. I like know, if you uh, yeah. you know season them, do what you got to do to them. Like there's they have some good flavor, and I also really like stovetop stuffing. You ever had stovetop stuffing? I don't think so. You literally, it's a packet. Like it looks like a mac and cheese packet. Yeah. And you boil like a cup of water, like a little amount of water. It happens super quick, and then you dump this packet in there, give it a quick mix, and then, like, you turn it off right when you dump it in. You give it a quick mix, and then you put a lid on it for, like, five minutes, yeah. stuffing. And it's good. It's not – I mean, I'm not – neither of these options are as good as, like, homemade Thanksgiving style, but obviously nobody has time to be going mm -hmm. that hard on a regular basis. I would do that. I would make those two things, and I would put them in a bowl together and put gravy on it, and I would eat it like a, a – like a bisque almost. <laughs> a bisque? I was going to say, I mean, I don't think you have anything to be ashamed of, but if the... Like a chowder. But if it's like that sort of, um, what is that word? Consistency? Like consistency, No, yeah. it's not. It's okay. it's mashed potato consistency. Right. But it's a lot in one bowl. It's, it yeah. is kind of almost like a, a chowder. You know what I never liked was a uh, hamburger helper. They used to give us that when we were in daycare. I, pad, I never ate it once. Probably because you never ate it. Because hamburger helper is something that I would love. It's yeah, literally it sounds right up like your alley. Taco meat or like it's just ground beef. Yeah, ground yeah. beef and mac and cheese. Like both things I've always loved. I really think the re and you would be like 
I'm not going to eat this. And I would throw crying fits about not eating it. You and I were... really look back at it, and I yeah. would definitely love <laughs> Hamburg Helper. It's your fault that I didn't like it. Sorry. It's your fault that I didn't like roller coasters. Do you remember that? No. When we would go to Chautauqua Lake, yeah. there was like a little amusement park. Remember they Old had, Town? No, it wasn't that one because that's in Florida. Oh. But they had like a ship that like yeah I remember like the that. ship so I they liked had the ship the ship of course that's but I'm just giving that for context so you'd know where I was talking about what I the point that I'm getting to is that they had a little kid roller coaster you know one that's just a circle and it goes woo you know it's literally just a loop we got on there and I was okay and you started losing it. We would so when when they have these coasters that are on such a small loop, you pass through where you get on, you know, like three or four times, and the guy is still there working the machine, yeah. and every time we passed him, you would just be like, "Please stop! Please turn this thing off! You have to stop it, please!" And there was, and I remember there was this girl, and we were, you know, we were four and five maybe at this time and there was this girl in the car in front of us who was our age if not younger soundless also but also like not enjoying herself so maybe she was a, yeah. like a sociopath she's probably petrified she just wasn't a screamer <laughs> i was but i wouldn't go thing. on roller coasters ever after that i love roller coasters the first roller coaster i ever went on after hulk, that that was mine the hulk is excellent it's the first True. roller coaster i ever like went on the first one I went on was the Mind Eraser at Darien Lake where your legs dangle. I've never been on a roller coaster at Darien Lake, I don't think. How many times have you been there? Not many. I think I've only been there once. I've been like there the at least. Park no, I've time. been there. I think I've been on a f- maybe. No, I think I've been on a few of them. I definitely have. I've been on. The Mind Eraser is the one where you're strapped in and you're bouncing. On. I think I've been on that Well, that's it. Your legs are like dangling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're like over the shoulder. It's like strap. the way the Dueling Dragons yeah. used to be. I think I've been on that one. And I think I've been on like the blue like boomerang style one that like. Oh, yeah. Like you go up and then you go backwards. It's not like crazy, but. um. Yeah, here's my thing. Well, one back to that, you know, Chautauqua roller coaster. I bet you since then somebody has probably died on that. I have very good instincts. So I bet you there was a reason I didn't want to be on it. Remember the elevator? How could I forget the elevator? I I have naturally good instincts. I'm a little bit, you know. Uh, You know what? I will agree with... Well, the elevator is a good case for that. We were... uh, at our fr- God, you're bringing this. Is, it's like you're bringing up trauma for me. I I would not go on elevators for. Yeah, you still don't like them. I feel like. No, I don't like them, but I I've gotten so much better. I with agree them. that I'm not a huge fan of them. Yeah, but like, but like the easiest I, way to travel. Like I can get in an elevator alone now, which I wouldn't even get on them at all. You know, back when this only I remember that this only happened like. Like, I started to be, get okay with elevators just, like, when I was in college. I started to kind of get a little better with them. But the problem was we would travel so much for your hockey, going to these different hotels, and I would have to take the stairs up to the third floor, That's or at least, because I couldn't, I could not get in that elevator. I felt so embarrassed about it, but I, like, I mean, I mean, I remember so many times people even holding the elevator for me, and I had to say, I can't. Like, like I'm no. walking. I'm gonna take yeah. the People probably just thought you were like really healthy. What? Healthy people take the stairs. Yeah, but I mean I was like ten years old I or know. something. Maybe but they were like, wow, this time. The the, the cause of all this is because I and a bunch of other people got stuck in an elevator that was in the house of an old friend of ours. It was an old house, so it had one of these elevators. Old in elevator. It. Yeah. And um it it got stuck in all the kids floors. were playing on the elevator for whatever like just going up and down because it was cool it was an elevator in somebody's house um it's an awesome idea but yeah it got stuck and it went up we were on it for a while and it went up and i was like i'm gonna get off this elevator everybody's like no we're going back down i was like i'm just gonna like walk back no we were on the basement you got out on the basement oh i thought i got up in the ad off in the attic Mm -hmm. but i'm like i'm gonna get off this elevator like i don't know and then, yeah, they all got stuck. And thank God I got off because then I was like, uh, hey, like, they're 
on, stuck on the elevator. Well, we were stuck on there. There was I can't remember how many kids there were, but at least five, right? And there was also uh, somebody's grandpa was in the elevator. Yeah, and when it got that stuck, might be made up. I when think it the got, grandpa thinks made oh, up. Oh no, I'll tell you why I remember it so distinctly because when it got stuck, you know, obviously the kids are starting to kind of freak out a little bit. I'm already losing it. And this grandfather is like, I will diffuse the situation with humor. And he he goes, um, he's like, look, oh, the elevator stopped. He's like looking around. He's like, maybe there's too much weight. And he goes, uh, well, I weigh 300 pounds. And I lost it. I mean, just unbelievable amount of tears. I was like, why did you do this to us? Like he <laughs> oh, was a skinny, was his fault? Yeah, he was a skinny guy, but he t- said he weighed 300 pounds and I was ready to blame someone. <laughs> I never knew that. Oh my god. I do know Terrible. that that like really affected you though. Yeah. But we used to ride elevators like Remember, like, we used to sit on elevators a lot. Like Those were ships. clear ones. You can do glass So elevators. that I was okay because I knew if I started, if I got stuck and started pounding, someone would see it. So those I was, I was okay with, which the is Embassy also, Suites which was also a problem. In Cleveland, we were at that hotel Yes, a lot. I remember that. That, yes. But when we were on the cruise, the cruises that we went on when we were younger, that also was a problem because you would push the button and then elevate one side of the hallway the elevators were clear and the other side they were regular elevators but when you pushed the button any of the four elevators on both sides would open so i had to like keep pushing until a glass one came so i push and then if one of the regular ele- elevators came i had to pretend like i wasn't go- if there were people on it, i had to pretend like it was an accident or something and then I'd, even if they weren't i would have to wait for that elevator to move, because if I pushed the button again, that door would have just opened, mm-hmm. right? We so, should. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting so panicked thinking if there's about a, all of this. I was, I was just going to say, you know, if there's a therapist that is out there listening to our show and you want to come on the show, there's probably collectively enough therapy for you to do here between Andrew and I to, like, set yourself up financially for the rest of your life. I mean, I think you could say that about anybody, though. I've heard, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I imagine therapy is a really tough thing to start. But a lot of people, and I wonder why, I'm, I always get ahead of myself when I'm talking, but a lot of people that do therapy, when they start it, will say, or once they're in it for a while, will be like, everybody should have a therapist. I wonder if that's just because they're trying to calm down their own stigma about it that they've had before, or if it's true, therapy. but I don't think it can necessarily hurt. But the other question is, how do you figure out if you have a good therapist especially if I feel like it's you, your first time going. I feel like you know if you have a bad therapist you just get a sense from them or well what? like I feel like you would it you would feel like you know your therapy's not going so hot you like you're not getting better at all so but in that case not even not getting better because I don't or this is what I think right. about therapy I feel like therapy I feel like you don't go to therapy to get better i feel mm-hmm. like you go to therapy to like become more comfortable with the things that are making you feel not good in the first place right that makes sense so you might not even necessarily like it might not be that you aren't still like thinking about those things sometimes but they're not like it's not sending it's you not controlling spiraling you. Yeah, yeah 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 um hmm. so i feel like if you had a good therapist you'd know because you'd be like talking to them about these things where if you had a not good therapist you wouldn't be able to express know, yourself express appro- yourself right. appropriately and the way you would you know that to. yeah 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 that's true i um hmm i've often like played in my head what it would be like to meet with a therapist for the I've, first I time i think about this too yeah i think i uh, everybody must right uh, i think i feel so. like some people genuinely probably don't need therapy well i suppose is, that's true awesome for those people yeah 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 wonder what it's like yeah 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 (laughs) (laughs) um i'm not a therapist but i do have a suggestion for you uh and it's don't drink so much caffeine well yeah that's true (laughs) i mean that's uh, that's true but like you know i was gonna say i didn't drink a lot of caffeine today i drank a good amount um and you had push pops yeah, but there's no caffeine to push pops. There's probably caffeine to push pop. 
SpongeBob Push Pops? You think SpongeBob is is hawking that shit? Well, out? they got a lot of Maybe. sugar in them, I'm sure too, right. which doesn't do the same as caffeine sure. for an extended amount of time, but it definitely gets you, you know, a little bit more involved yeah. mentally. Interesting, you know, in a non-productive way. It is interesting that most people, if they're alcoholics or whatever, when they get sober, they go to coffee. The big two things it's an are addiction. right. And you need to you need to fill it with something, but it, it does you know the caffeine. And I assume this is for everybody. I, like I drink it so much because I feel like if you don't, I, drink I can it. like you know get shit done on it. Yeah, I guess that's why people take Adderall, and that's yeah. not good for you. No, so. but I think I agree that it's I probably very addicting. I don't really yeah. know. They always can do the Adderall meth thing. And I don't know enough about science to compare the two. But you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever seen that? They say, like, Adderall is, like, one molecule different than meth in its chemical makeup. Only, like, one little baby molecule. That's cool. But I do feel like molecules, though, to say that, at the same time, like, one molecule probably changes a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Like, for drastically. Sure. Yeah. Or, like, you know what I'm talking about? The shapes and they got the dots on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, one not even dot off it's just like a different dot right right yeah science is cool be cool to know about all that stuff but i don't know when do you stop retaining information as well it must be well for you it's a little different i imagine see i can retain it every i can still retain information but every time a new piece of information comes into my brain a piece of information that was in my brain falls off mm. like I, my brain's at max capacity like everything right. i learned from this point forward i guess different parts of my brain are at max capacity but like like i would say the memory part of my brain like i continue to like have memories but memories fall off. i guess that's probably a lot of people though that's well if, i mean over time a lot of those things go away but anyways, i'm talking but... like year like like at the end of this year like I would say right now, probably like with the exception of a very few things, like I remember back to when I was probably 10, if that, and like probably by the time next year comes around, I'll be more in like the 12 range, except for a few things that are like specific stories that we still talk about the elevator, stuff like that. Like I was talking about (laughs) the Thanksgiving Day Parade today classic which is an awesome every time i talk about it now i'm like excited to tell somebody because it's a fucking awesome thing that we did like to be able to do it as yeah. much as we did in like all the time yeah i mean i was thinking about um a couple things about it as well well for one thing like we were there when barney went down i was telling that story today again a story though that i have no memory of and not like well we were super young oh and uh, like but i think you remember it no, I don't. I've just. I, I think you well, have we have memory, pictures though. because the thing is, like, we weren't just there that year. It was right in it front of us. In front of us, yeah. Which is, it was awesome. Yeah. Like that's, uh, and then awesome. Now I feel like at the time it was probably oh, like it was probably terrifying. Yeah. Because I Barney's dying. Yeah, some of that. T- yelling Barney at got Steve. Shot. Shout out Steve from. Blue I heard Clues. rumor mill. There's two shooters on, on Barney. <laughs> <laughs> it's a conspiracy theory I've been working on. Not bad. Yeah. That was a JFK joke. <laughs> Brought to you by Origel. <laughs> Got a toothache? Not as bad as JFK's. Something like that. Something like that would probably work. I don't think JFK's mouth got taken off. I think it was his dome. Got a headache? It's all, uh, Advil. Advil would have been better. Yeah, I guess so. But what are you going to do now? We already signed the contract with Origel. <laughs> we'll have to edit Drink this Drink more film. Ovaltine. Yeah. I can't wait. I fucking love Christmas. I have a sad story. Love it. It's not going to be sad to most. But I've been really looking forward to looking forward to putting my Christmas tree up this year. Like I think I'm you know, I'm almost at that point in my life where it's like I get to put up my Christmas tree this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um I was taking my long overdue, which might I add, was taking the air conditioning unit out of my window in my bedroom. Because it got to the point where it was so cold in my room at night because there was still the air conditioning in that I had to take it out. So I took it out and I was putting it, you know, in storage in the basement and I was down there and I saw my skis and I was like, oh, like, I mean, I've been thinking a lot about 
ski season. I had bought some new like gloves and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, like while I'm down here, I'm going to, you know, go through the storage and make sure like, you know, I knew my skis and my boots were there because I could see them. But like my helmet, my goggles, like my face shields, my like outerwear for when I ski, you know what I mean? All that stuff is packed up somewhere and it, it was. And then while I was doing that, I was like, while I was looking through all this stuff, you know what I didn't notice, which would have been a hard thing to come across because I say storage, but it's not that much stuff, was my Christmas tree box. So I'm like, what the hell? Like, where's my Christmas tree? So now I'm scouring like my house, my bed, anywhere where I think that a Christmas tree could have gotten placed. And nothing. Like I can't, I can't come. And it's, I don't have a small Christmas tree. Like I have a six foot Christmas tree. It's pretty big. The It breaks up. So it's not like one giant box, like table size, but you know, it's probably a box the size of this half of the table. It's not small by any means. And, uh, yeah. So, and then my, one of my roommates is like, what are you looking for? I'm like, I can't find the Christmas tree. And he's like, okay. And we used to, we lived together at our old house where we moved the Christmas tree from. And then my third roommate came down who didn't live there. And we're like, we can't find the Christmas tree. And me and my roommate both remember moving, like, are like, we're 99% sure we brought the Christmas tree here. And our roommate that didn't move with us, but moved in with us is like, dude, I'm pretty sure I've seen the Christmas tree like in storage before. Like at our new house. So either it's the Mandela effect, which it probably is, or like we don't know where our Christmas tree is to make Matt. So now I was excited because we have a nice Christmas tree. Like it was gifted to us. It's a nice Christmas tree. It's like, it looks good. You know, it doesn't look like a cheap, crappy Christmas tree, which is my big thing because Christmas trees are expensive if you want a nicer looking one. Um, so our only theory that we have is that we left it in the basement at our old apartment. So the obvious answer is, oh, text your landlord and say, hey, I think we left a lot of shit in that basement. And the basement was a mess before we got there. And we did throw a lot of shit out of it too. But we definitely, you know, didn't do, we didn't leave the basement as clean as it was when we got there, but the basement was never clean. And he said, you know, when we were moving in, like, I'm definitely going to clean this out. Never happened. So, it's like, do we text him and say we think we left something in the basement? Because then what if he's like, yeah, I'll meet you over there and we can, and I'll, we'll go see if it's down there. And then he's like, isn't all this shit your guys' is too? Like, that's not something that we want to do. Um, there's a reason that we left some of the stuff down there that we did. And it wasn't anything crazy, like, because, like, we threw a mattress out from down there. We threw, like, a bed frame. Like, we did throw a good amount of stuff out, but not everything. But we don't know where our Christmas tree is, so we don't know what to do. So my idea was text the guy that lived in the apartment above us at our old house and like, hey, we think we left something in the basement. Can like we, you know, stop by and and check. And he was, works like a very routine schedule from well, at least he did when we lived. Like he would always leave at the same time, super early morning, come home at the same time every single day. So I know that at, you know, if we go at a certain time, he should be there. But also like a big example my roommate was locked out once and we know for a fact he was home and my roommate called him like 18 times he never answered like never even after the fact text him was like hey why'd you call me so many times yeah just never heard from the guy and it really wasn't because he didn't like us like i think he was just you know kind of a bit of not in like a bad way but he lived alone like he just kept to himself like yeah he didn't fuck recluse not the right word brown recluse scary ass spiders right but recluse is a word independent of I know, that the brown recluse insect. that's what i think of sure you say recluse <laughs> i wonder why but it's like one of the top um, poisonous spiders well it's like very common in like southern states like there, there's really? a lot of them oh yeah i don't think it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's definitely poisonous you don't want to get bit by one but i think you can you know I told uh, avoid them, but there's like a lot of them, from what I understand. I was talking with our dad. I was we were out to dinner a couple weeks ago, and um, somebody was talking about like we were talking about like poisonous snakes or whatever. And I told him this story that I heard Jake the Snake, the wrestler, tell on a podcast about um, how this guy that he got his snakes from lived in Florida and was like a real recluse, like. Jake the Snake, you know, he was he was WWE wrestler, like people knew him and stuff and he w- when he would go get snakes sometimes or be around this guy, he'd be like, "Hey, let's go out. You know, we'll get some drinks, I'll get us some girls, blah blah blah." And the guy's like, "I just want to hang out with my snakes." 
that t- that type of dude. But he would also this snake fella go around to schools and you know do like reptile yeah. demonstrations. Yeah, and stuff. like the re- we had the best reptile guy. Let's talk about him okay. right after this. Uh, we should and he yeah mm-hmm. and he um, <laughs> <laughs> and he was doing such a demonstration at this one middle school and he's like in somewhere in like Ohio maybe like he'd travel around the country to do it yeah he was the snake guy yeah and he had this super poisonous rattlesnake and he's like here it is you know take a look the snake bites him bites snake guy bites a snake guy in the middle of the assembly it was the venom sacks had not been taken out or they had regrown so he gets bitten and he goes okay the snake bit me i'm being poisoned i'm gonna describe what's happening to me so that you guys know the school In, wasn't like now, the principal wasn't like stop the assembly <laughs> i don't know but i know that that's what this guy said now this guy you have to realize being in ohio or wherever he was the snake that he had been bitten by was not a common animal yeah. there so there was no, no reason, reason that please. any hospital in the area would have the antidote. So this man knows that he's going to die. So he, I assume, tells the kids what is happening to him, excuses himself, dies. He died? He died. That's how he died. Snake guy. Snake guy. All right. That's probably, guy. in Snake Guy's mind, that's probably the only way he ever wanted to die. I... But I don't yeah. think he would have wanted to die like in I think, front of children. I think, no, I don't think he cared about that. <laughs> I think I think when he wanted to die, he would have like when he was ready, he would have like laid down in his room, like with all his snakes out of their cages, <laughs> and like also gotten like a crazy big anaconda or something, yeah. and just let it. Oh like, my gosh! I heard this. Just one. let it. You know, like like uh like ka. Is that this? Yeah, yeah, from the jungle. Yeah, book? just like I, him I up heard this other story. Go. You know, people have pythons as as yeah. uh, as pets pretty commonly, and there was this woman, um, and her she had had this python for a while, and it started acting strange. So she brought it to the vet, who I guess did snakes as yeah. well, and was like, "What's the deal?" And the guy is like, "Do you sleep with your snake?" And she goes, yes, uh, some, a lot of times the snake will, will sleep in the bed with me. And he goes, your snake is getting ready to eat you. It, it's acting weird because it's growing itself. You know how snakes do that? Yeah. It's, it's so growing it itself so that it can measure you up and swallow you fucking whole. So every night this woman would sleep with her pet snake, n- not realizing that it was growing so that it could. And that is why... <laughs> Pets make me nervous across the board. Obviously, a snake, it's a predatory animal. But I'll tell you something, dude. Like, the way that some people are with their cats, right? They're, like, very lovey-dovey with their cats. Buddy, if you die alone in a house or an apartment with that cat and nobody finds you for a while, that cat's going to start to eat you. That's just what happens. Like, you well, yeah, because you the cat's got to live. Because the cat's got to live. The cat's going to start to eat you. It has no... Yeah, but that would probably be any animal. Probably, like, that, that yeah. happens with humans, like, when they're trapped somewhere. Yeah, I guess that's true. So you but I just that don't... Literally, and it's, that's called survival. That's different than you being alive and your cat decides it's time to eat you, and it successfully does. That's a, one of the reasons a lot of people like cats, is because, guess what? If a cat tries to eat you, it's probably not going to succeed. It would, you'd it have could, to be pretty It could probably, like, yeah. you know, if it, t- if, it, if it really wanted to, like, if it really wanted to, it could do some damage right up front, like if it picked its spot, you know what I mean, went yeah. for like an eyeball or something. Oh, yeah, which I think is the first place they go. Um, speaking about animals and stuff, I've been following this Instagram account called like the Dark Side of Nature. It's a pretty big account, and the internet is so crazy. I saw a video of a shark eating a sea turtle. What the Did- fuck? Like our our grandparents never saw that shit. Yeah. Like, no, I agree. I was talking about the Marianas Trench the other day. Yesterday. Literally talking about yesterday. Oh, yeah. Did you see that video of what would happen if you blew up the world's largest, like, nuclear bomb in the Marianas Trench? No. Guess what would happen? Nothing. Nothing. That's crazy. Isn't that fucking crazy? Man, the ocean is fucked they said up. It's so... Because that's it, the deepest point in the ocean, yeah. right? So, there's so much pressure there that it would actually, like, force the, it to, like, com- 
compress itself, like it would still get out, right? Like that nuclear energy eventually would, but have to, like there would be no, right, nothing in the water, right? And and Godzilla though, it's so deep, like the water is so deep, and there's so much of it. I know it sounds like a dumb thing to say, yeah. but <laughs> that the nuclear radiation would disperse like that. Like there would be zero effect. It would have no effect on the tectonic plates that the Mariana's Trench is on. Like nothing. There would be really? no people, you know, people uh, like assume probably that there would be like a tsunami or like an earthquake. Nothing. It would just be like it never happened. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. Oceans scare the shit out of me. As they should. More people need to be afraid of the ocean. I don't know why everybody's concerned about space. The ocean, that's no, what's see, impressive. Don't, I don't... I, see... You don't like comparing the two? No, because everybody always is like, oh, like, you know, everybody's exploring space because they only explored the first 10% of the ocean and now they're trying to find a way out. Like, they, you ever heard that line? Like, No, that's stupid, it though. It pisses that's me funny. off. I shouldn't say that it pisses me off because a lot of people I know say that. But, like... <laughs> You but know what fuck I mean? You. No, not fuck you, but like I'm like, dude, come on. But go That's fuck not yourself. True. Like, oh. But you know what I mean? They're like they're like, yeah, we're exploring space now because they started exploring the ocean and, and now they're trying to find a way off the planet. Yeah. Like no, that's not why. Yeah. Because realistically, if there were things that were in the ocean that were going to fuck us up, guess what? They would just come on land and do it. The reason that they're in the ocean is cuz they can't get on land. That's true for the most part, not effectively. Unless you're in like uh, the other guy situation, where they <laughs> where a bunch of salmon develop a um, kelp breathing, bunch of giant tuna develop a kelp breathing um, apparatus. apparatus. Yeah, but um, yeah, like the thing about oceans, though, it's the same reason why I don't want to go to space. Is like, and honestly, space is probably better than the ocean for the reason that like, not knock. Um, I. I guess I shouldn't say that there's nothing up there because there is. We know that now, kind of. Um, but we know there's shit in the ocean that we don't know what it is. Like, we know for a fact that shit exists in the ocean. Mm-hmm. Space is still a gray area. Well, I would say even to that point, like, you can go up into space and have space. Like, nothing will be around. But in the ocean, there are creatures in every single... And you like, don't the know... the second you step in. And Dude, you, I saw a blowfish on the beach when I was in Florida, like a dead blowfish. I've never seen a blowfish in real life before. It's and one then, of the most poisonous things around. Yeah, if you eat their little poison sack. Yeah. That's why well, if you're going to eat it, they have to be prepared by like, you have to be like certified to eat blowfish. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Like, I don't think if you get poked by a blowfish, you're dying. I'm not sure if you do or not, but it's, yeah, if you eat it, there's only one section about you know, I mean, I don't even know how big. Probably like the size of a dime or something that is edible. But a, I do know there's a, there's like extensive training episode. that goes into yeah. being able to serve blowfish. Can you imagine dedicating so no. much of your life to something like an, an art like that? Sushi or even, I mean, sushi. I think in that particular instance might be the most intense one because even with surgery like surgery or woodcrafting i was gonna say like in the in the yeah. arts vein a little mm-hmm. more um well i need you know really you get to of, a point but, but any type of art like i was saying this the other day because i've always thought that it would be super cool to be like a master of the piano me too right yeah but like to become a master of the piano you have to dedicate your entire life to it mm-hmm. and as cool as i think it as it would be, I have no desire to do that. And I say that because my girlfriend has been like, oh, I want to learn how to play the piano. I'm like, yeah. Every, she's like, I think it would be so cool. I'm like, yeah, everybody thinks it would be cool. Yeah. But you know how fucking hard it is to just be like, oh, I'm just going to learn how to play the piano and just learn it. It's not. It's really not even possible. Like, it is, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. Like, you have to have a lot of free time on your hands, yeah. which most people don't. Yeah. You got to. And you have to. And the free time that you do have, you'd have to dedicate to piano to piano 100 percent. still it'd be cool to yeah like just man. be able to sit down at a piano and just rip it i know yeah and like Ugh. yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i, I be so i'm cool. so it's so funny that you everybody also, has i that know thing, it, i'm just does. realizing that everybody kind of has yeah. do you feel that way about pianos at all emily <laughs> ah, fuck Emily. She's asleep. Yeah, I know. She doesn't even care about the show. <laughs> All right, we should do the Who Would Win League. Holy fuck. Do you know how long this episode is? No. Long. <laughs> okay. Longer than like, yeah. That's why Emily is not awake. Sorry. I'm starving. I would eat a small horse right now, as they say. 
<laughs> yeah, they do say that. They mm-hmm. do be saying that. Mm-hmm. So the Who Would Win of the Week, presented by 13 <laughs> Monkeys mm-hmm. All-American Whiskey, is Charlie Brown from the Peanuts versus Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Hence the Winnie the Pooh reference from earlier. Yes. Now, two depressed characters. Well, can I? And so, that's, I'm, si- I'm teeing you okay, up. That's how up. this you works. You go. Keep going. No, do I again. already no, do did. Again. Two depressed characters. So I, and I'm still somewhat under this impression that Charlie Brown isn't depressed. So I did some research on it and he's neurotic is like what he's actually supposed to be, which leads to a lot of depression and anxiety. Anxiety, I totally see. But to me, he doesn't. And I guess this is a very like not politically correct way to put this, but like he doesn't seem like he's ready to, you know, like not live anymore. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no scene in Charlie Brown where like, ooh, thank God that girl walked in because he was going to kill himself. <laughs> Which obviously all like is not a thing that like, it's not like, oh, you're depressed. You must want, like, you know what I mean? I So that's why I say that. But like, he to me, like, I haven't watched Charlie Brown in a long time. Yeah. But I never looked at him and was like, oh, he's de- he definitely is troubled. It would be so, I just, I would love to see a scene. That was a, I feel like, like I feel bad for saying that because sure. I don't think that's at all what depression is but when you're talking about the way that it's displayed in a tv character a lot of times it kind of is like yeah so i'm talking strictly from like a you're sitting down watching it to me he doesn't necessarily i i understand like he definitely is an anxious person he definitely is like that but he to me which i know they go hand in hand like you i Mm -hmm. I know and now i feel like i'm dancing around it because i didn't like my original take but that's only because i brought it to the extreme yeah I think you're fine. I wouldn't worry about that. No, I'm not like, wor- yeah. but like However, I, 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 cause I'm a big mental health advocate. Yeah. So that's why I don't want it to be, uh, come off the wrong way. But I just never so, like when I was watching Charlie Brown, I knew that he had a lot of things going on in that brain. I never was like, Oh, the basis of this character is that he's depressed. Whereas if you watch Winnie the Pooh, it's very obvious that Eeyore's character is based on depression. Like yes. that's his soul. You know, that is true. That's what defines him as a character in the show. And that's really what I mean about saying Charlie Brown's not depressed. Mm-hmm. His depression isn't what defines him, even though you seem to think otherwise. Well, I think perhaps that it does because, well... I would say more his anxiety defines him. I guess it depends on what peanut special you're Probably. talking about. If you're talking about The Great Pumpkin, I think you're absolutely right. I will say The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown does focus mostly on Linus. Whereas with the Charlie Brown Christmas, where I would say Charlie Brown's anybody depression de- really shows itself. Anybody would be depressed with a Christmas tree like that. <laughs> where Charlie Brown is really the main focus of that movie. Um, so you get to see more of what actually defines him. And I think perhaps to your point, um, what Charlie Brown... Um, because of the portrayal, the way that you described it, maybe it's even more accurate to real life. Yeah, so probably. perhaps it confirms a little. This is not the way I thought this who would win no, would go in either. the first place, but it is it is interesting. Um, and uh, so if these two guys are are, are going at it, Eeyore is a donkey. But he's like he's definitely small, like small weak. and plush. Yeah, like his t- like we like. It's not even that he is a stuffed animal that Christopher Robin is imagining as a real donkey. He's a stuffed donkey. His yes. tail is always falling mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pinned on, yeah. sewed on. Yes, I will. Yeah, so I wasn't sure going into this who I was going to take, but I've decided, and I'll tell you why. Okay, I like Charlie Brown in this fight. And the reason is because Charlie Brown is a resilient bastard. He really is. And Eeyore, even, you know, he gets motivated to not, but he's a quick, like he, he, he's a giver upper in, in his character. Like people motivate him, you know, and force him to kind of do certain things. But like at the end of the day, he's always crawling back into his little sticks but every time those sticks fall down, he, he them builds back them back up. Yeah, but Charlie Brown goes out and – like, the I mean, the football example is the easy example, right? Like, he's going to keep trying to kick that football. Right. And then guess what? Maybe, you know, 
they're not kicking the football anymore. But if you went back out there the next day with that football, he would line up to kick it again. He would. Interesting. He plays the piano. No, Who that's a different Linus? character. His name is Schroeder. Is that the dirty kid? No, that's uh, Pigpen. That kid's dirty. Yeah. <laughs> He's a dirty kid. That's we like done that character. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Pig pen versus somebody? Yeah. Pig versus, pen versus, the, versus one of the one of the uh guys from South Park. Oh, uh just like in you know, oh, I don't just know. Any which. I w- I would have to Yeah, think that would more. be that w- I th- I like that fight. Maybe we'll do that sometime. Um but back to this one. I just think that Charlie Brown has a little bit more and I guess and again, this is probably an insensitive thing to say. But Charlie Brown has like kind of that depression anxiety mix where they fight each other sometimes, right? Yeah. Where like I'm anxious, so I have to do something, but I don't feel like doing anything. Where Eeyore is just solely kind of depressed. He's definitely not anxious. He doesn't yeah, seem to be. He's just sad. Yeah, I think you, boy, I think you're right. I think unfortunately for Eeyore, he might get destroyed in this fight because I really do think because of kind of what you just said, Charlie Brown. And we see him get mad sometimes too. And if you hit that trigger for him because well, of his mental health, I think he that he's got the ability to kind of snap. See, but I don't think that um, Charlie Brown would snap on Eeyore because I don't think Eeyore is really pers- – like, I think he's just fighting. No, but I think they're going to be like, you two have to fight to the death. And Eeyore's going to be like, okay. Mm-hmm. And he's going to lay down and be like, just get it over with. And then Charlie Brown's going to be like – like, I don't want to do this to Eeyore. Right. But then that anxiety factor is going to kick in. It's going to be like, if I don't do this to Eeyore, right. I, we're both toast. So, like, I got to come out on top. I, you sold it right there with that one. That Eeyore line, I think that's exactly what he would say. Get it over I with. I think me and Charlie Brown have a lot more in common than I thought we did going into this I fight. Think, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're both completely bald. Yeah. Um, yeah. For anybody who's we just We both listening. sit up and look for the Great Pumpkin. I still That was Linus here. that did that. Fuck. I don't. I again. I haven't watched the movies in a long time, and you know that obviously my my ability to remember things is not great when it comes yeah. to stuff like this. It is interesting that we bring Charlie Brown up for the Thanksgiving thing because the Thanksgiving peanut special is by far the worst peanut special. I don't even remember. Him. Emily, don't give me that fucking look. You know it is. I don't even care about Emily. <laughs> I'm gonna start. Yeah, yeah. I don't. She's not even. That's why. That's why I'm gonna you start calling way. her a different name just to just to ruffle well. Sometimes her it's it's good to do that. It's like Ron Swanson thing where he like is to not build familiar familiarity. Yeah. 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 Give that go ahead and give that. Shut up, up Amelia. I'm going to just always use e names. Amelia Bedelia, RIP. Vote on the who would win of the week on oh, Instagram. Who would win of the week? I'm taking Charlie Brown. It has to be. Vote on that on Instagram on Friday, day after Thanksgiving. You're either going to be shopping, you're going to want to break, you're going to want to check your phone or you're going to be Still having a turkey hangover, um, laying around on the couch, not wanting to move all day. You're going to be on your phone. Vote on that. R.I.P. Amelia Bedelia. Can I do something? Please. But you you yelled at me last time I did it. Also, but it's it ha- whatever you I, do, I, I'll be fine with it. Um, Go ahead. I'm sorry. You didn't for actually. La- I'm sorry. Last time that I yelled at um, you, whatever it is. I just want to say this because I was saying it all weekend, and this is te- uh, considered a free ad, like. Drink 13 Monkeys All American Whiskey. You're going to be drinking on Thanksgiving. You, yeah, I would. If you this came out a day earlier, I would definitely say. But everybody likes to have a couple of drinks on Thanksgiving. It's also I can't guarantee this, but from like personal experience with it and stuff, and and other things that I've heard, uh, you will have if you just drink 13 Monkeys, you will have either no hangover or like a very light one. So I say that's worth it right there. Also, it tastes good. Yeah. Might include a little that in the ad up top. We still got to yeah. do the ad reads. Yeah, oy, you can do oy, that. Oy, oy, mashugana. Oh, mashugana. Yeah, we, uh, we should be done. All right. I guess we can. I, yeah, I know. There's nothing stopping us except for the fact that I'm hungry and I'm tired. Yeah, I know. I want to keep talking to you, though. Yeah, no, what do like you got? Show. Uh, I mean, a couple of things. One, I want to talk about Amelia Bedelia. I don't even know who that is. You don't know Amelia Bedelia? Skip it. I don't want to talk about Amelia Who is she? Amelia Bedelia was a book character. Don't care. Instantly don't care. I, I shouldn't have said book. That's on me. Yeah. Amelia Bedelia's got a new Netflix show. I, still I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't know. She's uh she just got drafted by the the Winnipeg Jets. A team. Is it uh, yep. 
Yeah. So she's going to be doing something. The doing the Charlie Brown dance. Oh, it will always make me laugh. One dance that I think the Dougie, the Dougie. Yeah. Okay, but that's not what I was going to oh. say. That is one dance though. <laughs> Um, but one dance that I always liked the idea of that I wish would catch on is like, the you shuffle. know the... <sighs> Sorry. Go. No, I, we're not talking about I want to talk about that. But um, you know the things that you get at like CVS, you like push the hand and then they dance? Yeah. I think like, that would be a hilarious dance move for people. Like um, like if you stand there like this. There's a bad moon arising. Yeah, yeah. Which was a toy that we had. Like if you stand there like this and then you have your buddy like press your hand and then you just start... I'm sure that's been done a lot of times, but we could start. Doing I mean, it. I've done it a couple, but nobody has understood what if it is because I've done I a bad job. If I do job. end up meeting up with you on Saturday, I'll do that to you. Yeah, I. It's not okay. I mean, I'll have to do it then, but I, I will feel very uncomfortable doing it in that Setting. environment. But I, I, I 100% will. There's a bad moon. Around. That's the only place I know that song from. <laughs> that was so much fun. I. Just to touch on the Cupid Shuffle, we were at a wedding over the weekend. I, the, That song came on. I got right off the floor I, for a couple reasons. Number one, any songs that tell you what to do, I'm out. Cha-cha cha slide, slide for sure. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were. No, I wasn't. I know you weren't. We were sitting next to each other. Which I did not know there was like a full dance to that. Uh, people are good at Because that's a too. great song. Yeah, but seeing those from an outside perspective, it's terrifying it's very cult like very cult like the cupid shuffle in particular is a song i dislike because when the show the voice first yeah, we talked started, about this in the podcast last week the last week we talked about this or yeah really either that or we talked about we it. we talked about it but i don't think we did it on the show oh it's all a blur when the voice when that show the voice first started CeeLo green was mm-hmm. one of the coaches and i don't know why you always put that into the story it because no it's relevance. because it's imp- no it does okay no, it does. yeah it does i don't I, we'll get to that point in the story cupid singer of the cupid shuffle went on the voice as a contestant and you know they do like the pre-interview or whatever and he's like you know i did that song and it's defined my whole career i never had a hit all this stuff like it's just that song and i haven't been able to do anything since this is my opportunity to change that so Cupid goes as a contestant onto the voice and he chooses for his song to sing the Cupid Shuffle. I don't understand why he would choose that if he was saying that that song defines him. Because he needed to get a chair turn? Get over that for himself. You know what I'm saying? Not the He time. needed to face that. No, but for him it was really the only maybe it was well it might have been but then the chances are him singing that song is not getting picked so they go on the show and he didn't yeah nobody turned their chair around so at the end when all of the chairs turn around to to see CeeLo Green recognized him and said Cupid that's Cupid and the other people were the other coaches were like how do you know that how do you know everybody how do you know this guy's like that's Cupid who sings the song that he was Cupid Shuffle and it was one of the most brutal things I've ever seen on television. I felt so, and I, I, I feel angry at myself because it's dumb to feel pity, frankly, for people. It's you I'm sure he still makes a ton people, of money off that song. But is it worth it, Matthew? Prob- well, not it's, if it not gold art, shackles. He's wearing Cupid is wearing gold chains, Matthew. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the show so much. Um, Andy, it's always a pleasure. Hashtag free Cupid. Um, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Uh, happy enjoy Thanksgiving. it. Enjoy your families. Uh, go Bills. Go Bills. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Love you. Love you too. Let's get out of here. I love you. Free Cupid. <laughs>